Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. So, as said, we are Marike and Philip, and we're a couple from Holland. And I would like to start with a question. What's the first thing that comes to mind when you think about Holland? Well, <laughs> if we ask Google, it looks something like this. And many people in the world think that this is where we're from, the land of windmills and tulips. And what do think people think about when they hear the word Switzerland? Well, probably something like this. It's all mountains and lakes. Let's uh, do one more. Um, what's the first thing that comes to mind when I say the word Iraq? Well, probably something like this. War, bomb blast, armies. So these are a kind of single-minded images we have about these places and its people. Um, but there's a difference between them, because when it comes to Holland and Switzerland, we know there's more to it. So we know that Switzerland is not only mountains, and in Holland not everybody has a windmill in its backyard. But when it comes to Iraq, we're not so sure. I mean, most of us have probably never been there, and these are all the images we get to see. For the last 15 years, we traveled the world as a photographer and a filmmaker. And in assignment for all kinds of different organizations, we traveled to countries in Asia, Africa, Middle East, and South America. And when you're traveling in assignment, you have to focus on specific subjects. So in a country like Mozambique, we had to focus on HIV. And in a country in, like Indonesia, we had to focus on prostitution. And in Colombia, we had to focus on war victims. Um, and these were the kind of images we brought back home. Um, and, um, but when we put our cameras down in that kind of countries, and we looked around, we often saw that the, the reality and the daily life was so much more uh, layered and nuanced than that what we had to show for the organizations we worked for. And when we, back, when we were back home and we saw the news, uh, we felt the same. News is often a very simplified and extreme version of reality. And like Iraq is nothing but war, or in Afghanistan uh, all women wear a burqa, and Syria is nothing but terrorism. So does it matter, you could ask, because we think it does. Because these kind of simplified images, they have a big effect on political decisions, for example, and on the public opinion. They are often based on headlines and the news. So we had the idea there was something missing in the images we received every day. So that's why three years ago, we decided to pick up our cameras and to go to some of the places we see on the news every day. And without denying that news, we wanted to add stories. We wanted to talk with people instead of only about them. And this time we had no assignments. And this time we were not going to focus on the big things happening. We were going to focus on the smallest thing possible, on a Monday afternoon when nothing special is happening. So we went to Kabul, the capital of Afghanistan. And uh, back then, Afghanistan was in the news a lot. And of course, Afghanistan is a conflict area and we don't want to deny that. But we choose not to focus on the conflict. And instead of that, we were focusing on one little simple question. We focused on the question, what is your favorite place of the city? And these were the images, th these were the places the people took us to. So here we see in the middle uh, is Maisa and she's wearing the blue burqa and she took us to Bak Babur Park where she was having a picnic with her family like many other families do. And this is Ghotra and Ghotra brought us to the beauty parlor where she's working and the name of this beauty parlor is called The Rose and I learned even, I'm blonde but I learned that deep black hair with red highlights is hot at the moment in Kabul. So here we are at Garga Lake. It's a beautiful lake just outside of Kabul and many people told us that this is their favorite place of the city. And there's a small entertainment park, there are restaurants, 
and if you have the guts, you can even rent a horse. And these are Leda and Reza, a young couple living uh, in Kabul. And their favorite place was simply their own living room. So they brought us there, and they're living there with their two-year-old daughter. And the favorite place of Shakila is behind the steering wheel of her own car. Um, besides being a mother of ten, she teaches women how to drive and even shows them how to fix a car. Well, maybe you think now, okay, but is this the truth of Afghanistan? Um, no, it isn't. Uh, the truth doesn't exist. But as a photographer, you can choose what you want to show to your audience. So you can choose to show the war or the conflict or HIV or prostitution or war victims, but you can also choose to show people's favorite places. And all these small stories are a part of the whole truth. So this series got worldwide attention and we got messages from people all over the world who almost couldn't believe that these people were also living in Afghanistan. So although we focused on the ordinary, these images were extraordinary to many and they connected people. So for our next project, we wanted to take it one step further. We wanted to connect people for real, one-on-one. -on -one. And the news led us to Lebanon. Lebanon is a small country next to Syria. But because of the war in Syria, there are about 1.4 million Syrian refugees now living in Lebanon. And the media showed us a lot of images of people living in appalling conditions, um, in sort of self-made refugee camps. But again, it was all from a distance and we wondered who are those people. Yeah, so still at home, we asked our Facebook friends, yeah. what would you like to know if you got the chance to, to speak to a Syrian refugee? And they came up with all kinds of different questions. They came up with questions like, uh, what did your life look like five years ago? or um, who do you miss the most? And somebody came even up with a question, um, who's your favorite football player? And we collected all these questions and we traveled to Lebanon. And in Lebanon, we met many Syrian refugees. For example, we met Abu Badoui. Uh, he once had a big car company in Homs in Syria. And we also met Iman. Uh, and she's a grandmother, and she fled with her seven grandchildren to Lebanon, and now she lives in a tent. And on behalf of our Facebook friends, we asked the questions, and we filmed the answers, and those answers, we put them back on the timeline of the questioners. And this is a short impression of what they saw. <laughs> مرحبا ليد انا ايمان كنو هاي سيدني آه انا راما شليمو من سوريا الحسكه مرحبا جاكلين انا مصطفى محمد من محافظه حما مرحبا يوهان كيفك يوهان انا من عائلتي كثير اسم يوهان كثير بدي اعد بالاهلي انا فخور انه تحقق حلمي وصرت امشي بدي اطبخ سميد وانا هون اللي بدرس الاولاد انا عم علمهم مشان اخذ حسنات واللي بعرفه من الصف الاول انا عم علمهم اياه بالنسبه للمساعد يعني هلا نحن بحاجه لمساعده طبيه اكثر شيء يعني كموضوع انساني وطبي يعني والله لا طالعت الا بلبسي طلعت لهون يعني جيت اشتقنا لبيتنا اشتقنا لكنيستنا وانا صار يمكن شيء اربع سنين لسه ما شفت اخي اشتقت للشمس بالسورية اتمنى ان نرجع لسوريا ومشتاقين على البلد كثير امسي <تصفيق> So these simple questions and answers, they connected people in a profound way. 
And the, a lot of these people are still uh, now friends on Facebook as we speak. And the war in Syria suddenly became personal. It got a face. So it became the war of Iman and of Satouf and of Wasim and of Bara. And we discovered that when people start recognizing themselves in others, they, they, when they watch the news, it suddenly gets a totally different dimension. And last summer, unfortunately, the war in Syria celebrated his fifth anniversary. And on the news, we saw many Syrians now also leaving the region. And in rubber boats, they crossed the sea between Turkey and Greece to enter Europe. And I have a question for you. Um, who, has ever, who has ever talked to, to one of these Syrian refugees? I see hands. <laughs> I see some hands, but not that much. And I understand, because so, so didn't we. Um, but we saw the European debate getting grim and people became anxious and sometimes aggressive towards the refugees. But nobody had ever really talked to them. So we found an opportunity for people to meet each other on the Greek island Lesbos. And that's the island you see a lot in the news where many uh, of the refugees arrive from Turkey. But at the same time, it's a beautiful place where uh, many European tourists celebrate their holiday. So we decided to go to Lesbos and to invite some of the tourists and the refugees to meet each other. And we asked them to sit down on a little bench overlooking the sea, or a little bench in the park. And we asked them to start talking about life, about having children, about your work, about cars, pets, things you love, things you hate. And we filmed their conversation and made it into a documentary. It's a film called The Island of All Together. Uh, it's a little bit too long to show here, but I we will show you the trailer so you get an idea of what their conversations were like. We take a selfie together, yeah, Hassan, together. because we're going to show the people that we love each other. I come from the south of Netherlands and where come you from? I am in Syria. You came from Turkey with a boat. With a boat, yeah. Do you want to explain me why why you came here? In fact, I'm one of the people who are involved in boat in Syria ten times. I'm a tourist, and in three days we fly back to Germany. Inshallah, we'll stay here. Yeah. <laughs> What's your favorite movie? The Hobbit. What's your favorite movie? Inshallah. I go to work in the swim pool. A bit of Bruno and a massage. Word jij ook uitgeweidelijkt of mag jij zelf je partner kiezen? Met de kennis is mijn lach dat je hebt. Hoe het mooiste moment van mijn leven. Shop kon nog even die ze kan vier jaar na zich sorry. Thank you. So just by talking with each other for half an hour, these people became friends. Selma and Hussam, people you see here, are still friends and Sil Selma translated all kinds of documents for Hussam when he arrived in Germany. And Seid and Mayada are still sending messages via WhatsApp to each other. And it didn't end there on that little bench. Um, as we speak, the film is shown on websites, on blogs, uh, on TV, and also on festivals. And their conversations became an inspiration to many. So, we live in a world where we can follow the news 24 hours a day. And that's a great thing because it keeps us up to date with big events. But we think it gets problematic when we when it's our only source and when we start using it to understand the world we live in. I mean, it's fascinating to see the 
strong judgments we can have about people we've never met and places we've never been. And we see these projects as our gifts to the world. And if you want to share them there on internet, please feel welcome. And we want to leave you today with one simple thought. Let's start talking with each other instead of only about each other. It's more than ever needed in the world we live in today. Thank you very much.